on the mess. Um, hello, everybody. Just give uh, everybody a chance to, uh, man, I am just a mess. Sorry about that. Uh, hey, Elena, how are you? Good to see you, Kyle, Diane. Hopefully you've gotten some uh, value out of these sessions. Uh, we'll finish it off today. Uh, I meant to uh, actually ask you guys to come at me with some earnings plays. So if you guys want to look at some earnings that are going to come out uh, tomorrow night or Thursday morning and share with me what you think, um, that would be a good exercise. So, hey, Deepesh. Uh, I didn't know you were on this. Listen, man, I really want to thank you for that gift, dude. You did not have to do that. I was going to thank you tomorrow. I didn't know you were on this. Um, so yeah, Sonos is up uh, three bucks uh, in um, in the aftermarket right now. Yeah, you did not have to do that, dude. Thank you. Uh, I was going to thank you personally, but um, I just saw you on here. Uh, well, I try and be a good educator. I don't know about the rock star part. All right, so I will, uh, but thank you. So we have about 91 people here. Um, I will, don't worry. Um, so let me share my screen. We talked about a couple plays for tonight. Um, so uh, again, welcome to... Uh, the webinar, uh, the last of a three-day uh, series on how to trade earnings. Uh, you know, again, my whole philosophy is that the markets are ahead of the news. Whatever the news are, whatever comes out from Washington, the Fed. Uh, you know, even if you have some outlier like COVID, is the markets were already setting up. It's just amazing how it happens. And so, what I try and do is take advantage of what the markets are telling me by betting on earnings series. So. Uh, I shared with you, uh, you know, bet on shorting a, a Stitch Fix SFIX at 68, covered it at 16, $16 lower in about 10 minutes, made about 73 grand in about 10 minutes. Uh, Spotify, um, I shorted it uh, the, um, you know, 359 Eastern time. And then before the market opened, I covered it $16 lower, made 80 grand on that trade. Um, shorted Vert, made $10 overnight there. I tend to take the profits like right away. Uh, OCGN, I kind of hung out for a couple of days and I made 88,000 on that. And then this was the trade we talked about last night uh, where I, you know, I shorted Wix at uh, 261 and a half. I was short you know, when we were on the discussion last night and then earnings were gonna be announced in the morning. And you can see that uh, even in the pre-market session, I mean, I thought I, I did great. It opened down $20. I made fifty-four thousand dollars, and you know, before it, the market even opened, so I shorted it last night just before the market closed, and then in the pre-market session, in about nine oh eight, twenty minutes before the, the the regular session, I I said, you know, I'm just going to take it because these things can disappear quickly too, and it ended up going down another twenty. I mean, I could have made another fifty grand. So um, here was uh, you know the transaction. Uh, I shorted about 261 and a half. I shorted 2,000 shares and made 54 grand literally before the market even opened. So in a blink of an eye. Uh, I also played this one trade, uh, SFT. Um, uh, I think I also showed you, and I took my profits, you know, in the session last night. Thank God I did because it went lower. You can see that um, I bet on this thing in the pre-market session yesterday. I bought it at 933. I got out at 10. You didn't even see 10 on today's session. It actually went to about 11.33. So you can see these things, these earnings plays can go all over the place. So I tend to, if I get a nice gift, like I got a $20 opening on Wix, I made $54,000 in a blink of an eye. I just took it and, you know, look, it went lower. I could have made another 50,000, but uh, that's the way it goes. Um, Diane, I'll, I'll answer your question in just a moment. And then there were a whole bunch of earnings plays for tonight that we talked about. I took some of them. I took uh, CPNG, I'm short that. Uh, I don't know if it's announced yet. I don't really see any price 
I um, I bet on this CYBR. I went short this too. And I don't see any activity there either. Some of this could be tomorrow morning. I don't remember exactly. I also bet on NEO. I bought the uh, put options this morning into a higher price on NEO. I bought the um, $42 puts that expired at the end of uh, this week. So um, it's it's not really doing much. NEO is uh slightly lower so i don't know if the earnings have come out on that because it, it's just not doing much and then i also bought uh shorted bumble and it's not doing much either although it was up three dollars and now it's giving up all the gains so maybe uh that's short so i shorted bumble to bmbl so i kind of did a lot and then i also bought abt i didn't buy sonos i should have because it's up three bucks so I bought this and uh, I don't see that it's announced either, ABT. So don't really see anything, but I did all of those. I don't typically do this many plays. And the one play I didn't do is up uh, nicely today. Uh, Sonos is up three bucks right now. It's up at about 37. So you win some, you lose some, but um, um, so somebody says, where do you find the list of stocks? So I, I'm just gonna, these are all of the earnings plays. I'll go through the earnings for tomorrow night. Uh, we'll analyze some of them together. Uh, these are two sites that I use. Um, so is this to every, uh, that wasn't to everyone. So that's to everyone. Okay, this, so let me make sure I did this again. I, I made this mistake last night again. So uh, my partner, Peter, young guy in his early thirties, just starting a family. We have an early morning program called the Boiler Room where I go through all of my trades live. And uh, we've been doing it for about a month now. Peter's taken his account from 85,000 to 115,000. And it's actually been a, a rough couple of weeks. Um, so Deep says, I missed the Zoom entry. So yeah, Zoom went down 17 bucks. I told uh, everyone to sell Zoom yesterday on our elite program. Um, I lost my train of thought. So yeah. Oh, so so this is um, so yesterday I talked about also upstart, um, where that was an aftermarket play, and uh, upstart is up thirty five dollars today uh, in the aftermarket session. Where's upstart? It uh, closed yesterday one thirty five, and it's up thirty five dollars today. So that was the big move uh, that I called yesterday. And here is uh, you know, what Peter entered in his account. So uh, at the time, this was when Zoom was trading, I'm sorry, I started trading at 135. And uh, this is what he had on his screen. And so everyone in the boiler room, you know, that you know, yesterday morning got wrong, long. Um, he had a risk reward of five to one, um, which is five times what he's risking. And um, yeah, so he had a risk. So then um, Dwight's going to play you just a short video. Uh, Peter made a, a short video of today's session and what he did and what happened in his account. So instead of keep on showing you what happened in my account, uh, we're just going to show you, you know, what happened in somebody else's. So Dwight, if you want to tee that up. Dwight, are you uh, are you playing it? Oh, there you go. Okay. Um, then again, maybe I have uh, no right to say anything right now. I, I'm just sick about this. <laughs> I can't even speak. Right. Um, Zoom, oxygen. So I'm going to check out oxygen, how it kind of holds. Uh, you know, kind of made a good push on a lot of shares and kind of close, but if you know, if you have a nice inside, because this has started to break out. So whenever these little stocks, they start breaking out of this thing, it, it may take another week or so, even another you know month, it does a little thing. And then all of a sudden, you know, it just comes out of nowhere and does one of these. Whenever it starts breaking cadence, which this has, it kind of broke above this high over here. Uh, you know, um, at some point you could see another push. So uh, let's, you know, we're at this weekly juncture right here. And, uh, you know, by the end of the week, we close on the high of the week. I'll probably, you know, want to be long again. 
Um, this is one of these sneaky things like Upstart where it's kind of tracing out a bottom here and then it just takes its sweet time. And that's so what I always say, the market is a distraction. It's like a, a magician. It's always trying to you know, distract you from where it wants to go. And that's why you just got to look at the, the pattern. So this seems like it's got a very solid underpinning here. So I'll, I'll be looking at OCGN and you know, I'd love to get back in there. So uh, Moderna is now collapsing. It's down $13. Um, it's down thirty dollars. The way it's looking. So here we go, um, dude. So uh, Zoom, where's Zoom? Where's Zoom? I'm starting to stay. I might miss it. Oh, I can't believe that. I might miss it. I don't want to chase it though. I don't want to chase it. I want to kind of get it, you know. We had such a big reversal yesterday. Uh, looks like I might, might have a problem with my internet connection here. Um, this bumble is slightly higher. Yeah, it looks like I have an internet connection problem here. Peter, are you there? Yeah, 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 I'm here. I can hear you. Okay, so yeah, you can see this thing is stopping and starting. Um, oh man. Upstart is absolutely flying. I just... Yeah, it's up $32. 3,000 pounds in the one position. I had 14,000 shares, it's like 500 grand. Yeah. Ugh, whatever. So, um, Zoom is dying. It's not going to hit that limit. And oh, this really? Is a strong sell. This is, yeah, this is a strong sell. Um, this is something I feel very confident about. I just want to chase this low. Uh, Copang is up slightly. Bumble is unchanged. And Neo is up. Let me see what these options are doing. Kind of got to do it right away. So Neo is, uh, how much is this thing priced? 44.50. So we said the 42s are spent 58 cents. Thing. Yeah, okay, you can see it, it did fall to this 50. I'm just gonna put some on. I'm gonna put some on by that open. Neo. Yeah, uh, you can see it's went exactly the 42 puts. Why? Okay, I got him at sixty-two-three. So yeah, went to that fifty cent area and collect, you know, consolidate. So let's see. Um, so this is an earnings play tonight. I bought two hundred and fifty, which is twenty-five thousand shares. Uh, at sixty-two cents, uh, two hundred and fifty of the uh, August thirteenth puts for Neo. So. See what happens there. So that's what I like doing is kind of buying into this, you know, higher opening and see it's kind of collapsing as we speak. So let's see what happens here. Um, Neo is, yeah, it's going higher. Wow. So yeah, not going according to the game plan. So you can see though, even though we've opened higher relative to yesterday's key reversal, uh, you know, it's nothing. Um, you know, this is something like I, I wanted for Zoom where you get it up into the reversal and then sell into this. So 
you know, this even goes higher on my, actually adds my position. Let's see. Could be just one me to the knife harder. I mean, there actually is this little support guy right there. But this could be, I'm going to see the price action today. Okay, so that was uh, kind of a small snippet of what goes on every day, um, where I look at, uh, you know, different things. Uh, this morning, I, uh, you know, told everyone a short Zoom, and uh, Zoom zoomed uh, down, uh, what, $15, $17, $14 today. It was down about $18 at one point. Um, I told everyone to short Moderna yesterday. I made a uh, quiet uh, 200 grand uh, shorting Moderna. Um, actually, I made more. Um, uh, this shows uh, yesterday's activity, and then I uh, sold into a rally yes uh, today when it went to 435. I sold some more and got out of uh, 395 and went all the way to 375. So I made about 250 grand in the last two days just in uh, Moderna. Uh, and we talked about that in yesterday's session of the boiler room. Um, so uh, this is what you know, I do, I just look at price action to determine where, you know, something is likely to go based on its, you know, prior price action. And so, um, you know, I said as an exercise before, uh, you know, if anybody wants to kind of take a look at what the earnings are tomorrow night and tell me what they think um, they would do. Um, so Kyle, instead of putting the names, I'd like you to kind of say, based on what you're seeing, what you would do. So I'd like to do that as an exercise. In the meantime, I'll go through some of them myself uh, and see what we can see. So basically, this is what I do. And this is how I find names, you know, whether it's now or I put something on my radar, you know, if something's doing something, you know, I'll, I'll uh, you know, it's put in a, a pattern that either works now, may work in the future. So uh, tomorrow night, so you can see these are all the companies that are going to come out after the close tomorrow. Um, and so uh, we've got Disney. Uh, I was actually quite bearish on Disney, but it looks somewhat better now. And frankly, I was thinking I might buy some calls or I might just buy Disney. I mean, it, uh, what I look at is these uh, weekly, um, let me just narrow this down. So you can see these key reversals. What I mean by key reversal is in this week, it made a new low, closed on the high of the bar. Made a new low, close on the high. Made a new low, close on the high. So I look at a combination of patterns and price action. And when you see all of these reversals, that would be very hard to go through that. So if it can't go one way, it's going to go the other. And it looks like the path of least resistance on Disney is actually higher. I mean, this stock was lagging. It's been you know really a dog. But by the virtue of what this looks, I can imagine that it'll... Um, probably go higher out of this area. I mean, it's still in a kind of a lagging area. And look, I only take high quality shots. Uh, I would actually leave this alone. Uh, you know, this is going to be a hard guy to get through. So, uh, you know, I'll put that aside for now. So then you got Airbnb coming out. Um, so let me just do this. Airbnb, and it's got a reverse. Uh, Again, I only look at things that really look like they've got a clear path. DoorDash actually seems like it wants to go higher. Um, this actually wants to go higher. Sometimes you know, it suckers you in when you think you're at a high here. So I... Um, DoorDash, that tease. And I just try and look for things with liquidity, with uh, something that's going to move. So like more of technology stocks, so I kind of stay away from, you know, like a bank stock that, you know, may move a dollar or two one way or another. I want to sign one something that's going to move. I mean, I had a stock today that moved $20 in my favor and actually was down 50 bucks. And Wix was down $50 today. So uh, I thought I was cute taking out, you know, getting out of 237. It went down to 209. Um, but, you know, 
something that you know get, gives you a fifty thousand dollar gift overnight um, can't really be too uh, unhappy about. And that's just, I mean, it's just magic. I don't know if you know you guys can start seeing the opportunity uh, where you can, you know, put in an order literally one minute before the closing bell, uh, and then you know close out your trade right as it opens and make you know gargantuan amounts of money. I mean, I don't know where else you can you can do this on the planet. So I just want to see some of these other plays if they've come out. So uh, Cyber looks like uh, hasn't come out. Neo's not really doing anything. Bumble is slightly higher. So nothing really to write home about uh, on tonight's package so far. Uh, laser. So. Michael says TTCF earnings tomorrow, TTCF. So what I try and do is pan out. So this has got a very squiggly history. And so what I say to myself, uh, Michael, you know, is that if I get short here now, can I see prices kind of cutting through all of this stuff? And there's too much obstruction. And this is a weekly bar and you've already got extension here so let me just kind of walk you through the process so a lot of this is uh visualization and i kind of go through this um you know visualization process by the way these are um i have a daily email service these are kind of a recap of all the trades. So those of you who followed my e daily email, you would have been in Deer uh, since July 26 at 356. It's now 385. Uh, upstart at 137 and a half. It's now 170. Uh, Zoom at 371 yesterday and 359. So uh, uh, quite a robust haul over the last couple of weeks for those on uh, my elite program. Um, So TT, so this is kind of the process I go through. I go, okay, so now if you're shorting it, you know, can you see this candle extending? You know, does it look like there's a path lower, an easy path lower? And really it doesn't. It's already had extension for the week. I mean, it, it's already gone from 22 and it's already here. So now for it to kind of push lower, you know, it just, and now it's got to cut through all of this stuff. So what I'm looking for is a setup that just, you know, it's cleared. There's a lot of underbrush that's already cleared and it's just ready to fall over. Or conversely, like Sonos, where, you know, it's, you know, got this barrier and then it's ready to rise through here. But, you know, this is just a very complicated looking chart. It's a big symmetrical triangle. Imagine it's got a lot more, uh, you know, back and forth to go into before it kind of resolves. So I would not look at this just because it's not an easy path. I can't see. So that's the, I'm sorry, that's the, so that's the weekly. So, you know, tomorrow is Thursday. So, you know, I, I try and see how, how's prices. So, you know, can I see prices? If I get short here, can I see it cutting through all of this stuff to the left? And then the, the truth is I can't, it's just, an, you know, this has got a head and shoulders. It looks like it's going to go lower, but this does not look like an easy trade where, you know, let me just compare it to like Wix last night. Where this thing was sitting on a ledge, it had broken down and just ready to, you know, go over. There's like no obstruction. And see it closed here, and then you know, there's just not, you know, all the stuff to the left is way to the left. So it had a path to fall. You know, where if you get crammed up against previous price action, it's hard to cut through that. It's hard to explain um, what I mean. Um, you know, there were a couple today, and you know. This is why I did it. So, you know, I see like Bumble sitting on a ledge here. You can see it's, 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 um, you know, it may take a little bit more time, but I think it's, it's going to cut through this ledge than um, uh, CPNG was sitting on a ledge here. So, this is what I mean, where you've kind of cleared through a lot of stuff. And um, there's nothing really stopping this thing from falling. You know, so there's nothing really for, you know, it's just sitting on this ledge here. 
And once it gets under here, there's like nothing in its way where that other stock just had just too much clutter to get through. So I don't know if that makes sense to you. You know, it's a lot of it is just a visual and, uh, and what have you, but uh, let's just keep working through here. Um, so I'm just looking at earnings place today. I don't want to look at any other charts. Uh, I'll tell you how to join the email service. Thank you for asking Mahantesh. Um, let's see. Gaurav says, what guidelines do you recommend for trade size for beginners? Uh, you know, as all, you should, you know, risk, um, you know, uh, certainly on these earnings plays, don't risk more than a half percent of your, you know, so if you have a $10,000 account, you know, you can buy one option for 50 bucks or sell short and risk, you know, 50 or hundred bucks on any given play. Uh, you know, the whole, the whole key to trading is survive, right? Is to be here is uh, don't, don't wipe yourself out. So um, just uh, keep an eye on anything's come out here. So yeah, so I shorted Copang and it's down about a dollar and a half right now. When I shorted like 5,000 shares, I think. I don't even know what I do half the time. Um, so I'll show you what I did. So just like with STF, I made like seven grand in about 10 minutes and I actually took, took it out. Um, so yeah, so this is um, what my um, open p &L is right now, but it doesn't reflect the aftermarket. So I'm short um, 5,000 shares of CPNG and 5,000 shares of uh, Bumble in this account. And then I think I've got Cyber in another account. So I made three plays to, oh, and I've got 5,000 shares of uh, Avnet. Um, so, and this is down now a um, dollar and a half. So almost $2. So this is, uh, instead of being minus 2,600, I'm up about $8,000 there. And uh, this is about a break even. So CPNG is kind of going in my favor. Oh, it's crashing now. It's crashing. So now CPNG is down uh, $3. So I'm up uh, $15,000 on that 5,000 shares. So this, this to me was just, we talked about it yesterday. It was sitting on a ledge and there was no way, for, there's nowhere for this to go, but lower. This thing's just got air under it. And it has to come back and re-challenge this low. So right now we're trading at this $34 area we've opened and gapped lower. So there's a part of me that just, yeah, maybe I'll take a thousand shares now. Cause sometimes, you know, you get a move and then it takes it all back. So, you know, let me see CPNG. Sometimes I'll take the first thrust. So I'll, uh, I'm gonna put a limit on a, a thousand of those shares at 34 and a half and get out of, and that way, you know, um, the rest is just probably not gonna, So you just, you know, $15,000 in two seconds. So I'm going to put a limit to get out of 1,000 at 34.50 on 1,000 of the um, 5,000. You know, um, so it's pending, has not been filled. So you can see I was rallying a little bit. And the same thing with, you know, STF yesterday went all the way to 1133. And by the time I got in the webinar, half an hour later with you guys, it was a 10. And so I just got out and then it crashed today. So, you know, on these earnings plays, I just tend to take what they give me. And, um, you know, today on Wix, it, it, you know, dropped another $20 after I got out. And maybe the smart play is just to get out of half, peel out of half. And that's what I think I'm going to do. Um, so I've got a 3450 bid on this to get out of that. ABT doesn't look like it's moved. Bumble is now, oh, Neo's um, going in my favor. I actually shorted this around $45. I bought the $42 puts. So I don't know if anything's come out on that yet. Um, so let's just keep plotting through. 
Let's see if they filled it. No, they didn't fill it. Um, so let me just keep going through these earnings for tomorrow. And so this is what I do. You know, you can you see I made uh, sixty thousand uh, dollars. You know, in yesterday's plays, I made fifty four thousand on um, Wix, and then uh, seventy five hundred on that STF. So now it should be filled. It went under there. I should be filled on a thousand. You know what? I put it in the as a day order instead of a um, aftermarket session. Hang on one second. That's the problem with doing these webinars and trying to um, so extended hour session. All right, place order. So I got filled at thirty four forty eight. Um, so where did I sell it? Let me see if it's on this thing. It should be here. Yeah. Okay. Here it is. So you can see that um, I sold short five thousand at thirty six sixty four, and I covered a thousand of it, two dollars lower. Um, I shorted five thousand shares. I sh covered a thousand. So. You know, at least I made something. We'll see how it goes. Uh, and it's, you know, it's going even further lower. So, uh, you know, it's a really, uh, it's a fun game, this. Um, obviously, you can get hurt. I mean, I've had things, you know, move against me um, big time. So you, uh, just like anything else, uh, you have to monitor your, uh, your risk accordingly. So uh, Gaurav says, can you look at Baidu? Uh, yeah, it's coming out with earnings tomorrow. You know, I think the path of least resistance is lower. Um, this one's tough, you know, because you've got a little bit in inhibition here, but it, you know, it, I think this goes lower. This whole chart is lower. You know, there's an outlier with the Chinese thing. This could be a bit of a bear trap. So I, you know, I wouldn't play it, but if you put a gun to my head, I'd probably say it goes lower. Um, Jess says, when shorting, how do you know when it bottoms out after the print? Well, you don't, I mean, you don't. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I really should just take some off so this was obviously, you can see it opened right here. And that's where I got out. So I got in at 261, it opened at 237. I made $25 in, you know, a fraction of a second. And this was even before the market opened. So I was just happy as hell to have, you know, $54,000 gift overnight. And then you can see it went down another 20. So I probably should have just kept half of it, but you can see now the other one, I got out of 10 and you can see this thing plummeted. So these things can do anything after the earnings. Uh, earnings are just uh, the ultimate, is it SFTS? What's this? I don't even remember what I did. So you can see I got out of 10 yesterday on the webinar. Actually, it went to $11.33 in the aftermarket session. You can see it never printed that in the day session. It opened there and then went you know, straight down. So, you know, you can look back and say, I should have done this or I should have done that. And then, you know, it goes right back in your face. So, uh, you know, I tend to just, if somebody gives me $25 in less than a minute of being in the market, I mean, I spent three minutes being in Wix. I shorted at 358 and got out at 908, even 20 minutes before the market opened. So, you know, I had 2,000 shares. I actually was going to do 2,000 another account. And this thing dropped $50 today. So how do you know how far it drops? Well, I mean, this picture tells you that it's probably got a lot further to go. But, you know, I'm doing these earnings plays just for the play. Just, you know, um, because it, it can kind of do anything after that. Um, you know, I was in Spotify. I got out early. And then by the end of the day, it closed at, you know, the high and then went higher. So, I tend to just get out very quickly. If I've got a, a huge gift, 16, 20, 25 bucks on the opening, I'll take it. Um, so, you know, maybe I should just take off half and then see how it does. So I kind of got out on Spotify right there. 
it went, you know, $8 lower um, and then closed on the high and then, you know, went back to almost where I got in and then, you know, kind of collapsed again. So, you know, inherently when I do these things, I'm looking at uh, a pattern that is inherently bullish or bearish and it should go after the earnings and thereafter. So, you know, where you decide to get out, the market tells you where to get out. Um, and, you know, this thing looks like it's going to go and keep on making new lows here. It's still a short. Uh, Palantir, I think, is tomorrow. Yeah, I think Palantir is uh, going to go lower. Um, yeah, I would, you know, this thing is, I would bet on this going lower. I mean, I don't know if you're going to get on the, you know, so here's a huge, this is the governing pattern. So this is, that double top tells you that it's over. And yes, you can have rallies, but these are just dead cat rallies, dead cat bounces. This thing's gonna go lower. Now, you know, you've got to go through all of this stuff. So, you know, now I have to picture myself, you know, can, you know, earnings kind of take out all of this stuff and go through here? Maybe not. You know, you can see like, um, you know, Copang relatively was trading down here last night. So when I shorted Copang, it was on this ledge already. It didn't have to clear out anything. It already cleared out anything. And now it's just got free space to, to roam. So that's kind of what I mean by spacing. But I think, yeah, this thing's going to go lower. Uh, so what it does after the earnings, I don't know. Uh, you know, even if it, you know, if it sometimes if it opens higher, I just short into that. Um, so let's see, Neo, AYT hasn't really gone. So some of these are tomorrow morning, so I won't know. Bumble's just slightly higher. Um, so let me just kind of keep trudging through things, unless you guys have anything. Uh, analyze ITRM. Is that an earnings play? What I would like you guys to do is sift through the earnings and yeah, what are you going to do with that? I mean, <laughs> you can't short it. I mean, you got 70 cents of upside and unlimited downside and it's not going up. So um, yeah. All right. So let me just keep going through here. So this is for tomorrow night. Um, let me just do this. These charts are quicker. Uh, that looks like it's going to go lower. Um, some of these may just be very um, low. Uh, volume kind of thing. So that looks like it wants to go lower. So weekly, daily. So that's tomorrow night. That thing looks like once, let me just see what kind of liquidity is in this thing. Probably not much. 300,000 shares. So not a whole lot. I like to see, you know, 500,000 shares in a day, but I'll keep that on my radar yeah so that that is upstart right <laughs> so that is after today's earnings and upstart um let me see zip that looks a new issue but it looks like it wants to zip higher Not a lot of history here, but I don't know what this is, but you know, maybe worth a flyer. Path of least resistance seems higher. Uh, zip, I'll just put that on my um, zip file for tomorrow. Kind of see how it closes tomorrow night. Uh, we have ASTR. That's gonna go lower, but it's kind of just too complicated. 
you know, so I try and do a whole bunch of visualization. I, I kind of, you know, take the plus side. I take the devil's advocate on the other side. That's going to go lower. But, you know, $8 stock, I mean, you've got big upside and not a lot of, um, you know, you've got limited upside. So a stock can only go to zero. And this thing looks like it's well on its way to, to doing that. So what is this? Body. Is this a weekly, daily? That looks interesting. That thing will probably drop a dollar after earnings, you know, 20%. Um, I'm just going to put that down. So certain things just like kind of have no risk to me. Like that company, you know, um, the worst that thing is going to go sideways. It can't really hurt you on the upside. Um, BLF. But, you know, if you want to short something, I, I like to short something, you know, 50, 40, 30, something that's got some potential on the downside. Although I am short quantum scape here and, so that thing looks like it wants to go lower too. That looks pretty interesting. What is that? BLFS. So then I you have to draw my mind how much of an extension I can see on the weekly here. But this thing looks like it wants to go and all it needs is a push. So this is all I do is look at a picture and you know you can see it's very low liquidity. I only did 100,000 shares. So I, I just don't wanna play around with low liquidity situations. The spreads can be too wide and too hard to get out. Trading's complicated enough. Seer looks like the same thing. So all I do is look at a picture and say, is this in an uptrend or a downtrend? And this is clearly in a downtrend. So earnings are just gonna be likely a catalyst, whatever they are to send this thing. So it's got 300,000 seer. Let's see what these earnings, these options are. Yeah, it's, well, I'll put it on the list. Um, So there's, this is a very fertile season for earnings. A lot of earnings, you know, come out. Not always this robust. I don't usually do three plays in the same in the same period, and it's such risk that, um, you know, I really try and limit it to one or two good ideas. I just made some money in the last couple of days, and I'm just feeling, and that's a bad thing in trading. Whenever you make money, you feel like you have some room and that's when you dissipate it never want to let uh hubris uh play a role in trading you gotta monitor your mind this kind of looks interesting there's a double bottom here with a key reversal what is this a daily that actually could surprise to the upside uh elms so then i'll go and look at the friday morning uh earnings what's going to come out friday morning um, I guess we're not doing a webinar tomorrow, so uh, um, so that's basically what I'm looking at for tomorrow. Um, we've got Disney. Let me see if there's anything else that looks like it's coming out. So Disney's the big thing coming out tomorrow, but I don't know. I don't think I'd touch it. Um, Airbnb, NTES, NetTees. Um, yeah, I just wouldn't touch that. So I hope you guys have got some value out of this. So this looks interesting, PAGS. You know, key reversal into a resistance area, could follow through, could be a fake out. Um, that actually looks pretty good to the upside. So, you know, a lot of this is a crapshoot. Some are better than others. 
like uh, CPNG to me just felt really good today. And you can see it's crashing. It's down four bucks. Uh, I got out 34, 40 on 50 on a thousand. I got 4,000 left and it's down uh, four bucks from where it closed. So I'm making 16,000 on that. I took profits on two. I'm making $18,000 on that play. And, uh, you know, it's just happening now. Neo going a little lower. And then I think ABT is maybe tomorrow morning. I don't know. And then Bumble was against me about 60 cents. Um, so let me now take your questions. Uh, Perez, you are welcome. Uh, I did short Moderna today, Marco. I made uh, about 250 grand today uh, on Moderna. So Zip is an Australian company, uh, pay, a finance company. So I saw that uh, there was a huge transaction with Square. Did they do it with Zip? I don't, I don't think so. Um, I think it was with something else. So yeah, I don't even know what these companies do. I don't even want to know. I like, all I do is look at a picture and I made 50 grand on Wix, just betting on a picture. Um, Justin says, would you short into Moderna? I think, it, yes, I do think it's going to go lower. I'd look at any rally to short into it. GDRX is earnings tomorrow. GDRX. I think I saw that yesterday. Ah, in interesting. Uh, so you have a hook down, a key reversal. Yeah, so I like this a lot. Thanks for that. So yeah, so let me look at it on the bigger screen here, if you will. GDRX, now it's just a question of how much liquidity it's got in this thing, because this is a, a good, this is perfect. This has got everything you want in uh, a setup. So when I open up a chart, whether it be an earnings play or you know looking to make a bet on, you know the first thing I do is say, you know, okay, you open it up, what is this thing doing? Is it up, down, or sideways? Well, clearly this is in a down market. It's dropped from 64 to 30. You know, then are there any guiding or governing price patterns? And to me, you know, the picture was told right here, this giant double bottom, double top, basically tells you it's over. This thing is going one way. And so, you know, this is my cheat sheet, my trading for dummies. So even if it rallies here, I'm going to be selling into those rallies because this has told me what to do. So, you know, um, and this is what a lot of people aren't doing. They're not looking at enough history where if you're looking at a 15 minute chart, you can't see all the way back a year and see what happened. So I go back a year, I go back 40 years sometimes to try and discern what's really going on. You know, in trading, you want to know the cards that you're holding. In a 15 minute chart, you know, with a three hour window, you can't see anything. It's just straight gambling. So what I'm trying to do is put the odds in my favor. So the, the pattern, the direction, everything's lower. So once I understand something's lower, whether this has an earnings play or not, is I want to get in direction. I want to surrender to the will of the market. I want to get in sync with whatever that market's telling me. So here's another interim double top here. And you can see it crapped out there. And now you've kind of got this rounding top or this mini head and shoulders here, whatever you want to call it. And now it's sitting on this, this interim ledge. It just needs to kind of cut through here. But you know today's action, so this is the key reversal. Made a new high, close on the low. So I call these insurance day bars, these key reversals, because this tells me two things. It tells me how to get in sync with this move. So I basically put a sell stop here. And then it tells me where to put my stop. So that's my risk. So this is my risk. And that's, you know, who knows how much is my reward? Only the market knows. So the thing is, if you go in understanding the risk, that's half the battle. Most people go into a trade thinking, how much am I going to make on a trade? The first thing I think about is how much do I have to risk? And if I can get a trade where I can really see the risk is small, then I load up the boat. I bought, you know, buy or sell more 
you know, because, you know, if I can see that the risk is pretty small for, you know, an acceptable outcome, then, you know, I will take that. So, uh, so GDRX, so this was a great find. And, uh, you know, I would expect the only thing is it's got, you know, it's got to clear some, you know, some of this underbrush over there, but over time, this thing's going to work its way lower. Um, so let's see what uh, the liquidity of this stock is. GDRX. Ah, it's got 2 million shares. So that is definitely, let me see what the options look like. Uh, what is it trading at? It's trading at a 31, 31. So the 30s are trading at 140. There's a lot of liquidity there. So, so then you got to say, uh, you got to minus this premium 140 minus 30. So your um, break even is 2860. So this thing has got to settle by 2860 on Friday um, for you to break even. The problem is if this thing just goes up 20 cents tomorrow, you've got one day and then you lose a ton of premium. So let me just see what this chart is telling me here. So um, yeah, this chart's trying to tell you that somebody, somebody's betting big on the downside on this. But he's got 20,000 contracts here. Somebody's sniffing out something. Yeah, you can see this is kind of making a bottom. So even though it's a bit risky, it's maybe a, worth a shot. I'll take a look at that tomorrow. Hopefully GDRX opens higher and then I can buy these options lower. That's what I did at NEO today. Um, NEO went higher and I bought the puts into that higher move. So, um, yeah, these are the puts too. Uh, so I'm going to definitely suss out either selling GDRX. Is, so is that uh, tomorrow, Michael? Is that after the bell? Hopefully it's not um, in the morning because if it's in the morning, it's too late. August 20 on GDRX, but is it uh, August 20? It's pre-market. Uh, well, <laughs> I guess we'll all see what it does. Too late now. Uh, although you could probably sell it in the pre-market. So this is pre-market in the morning. I may just try and sell some now. So this Copang is dying. It's down $5. Um, so I've got 4,000, I'm making 20,000 plus the 2,000, like 22 grand on that play right there. Um, so that's not too bad. Let me see if it's reflected in my broker. Sometimes the broker doesn't reflect the uh, aftermarket mark to the market. So AM reporting. Uh, let me see if I can, I'm going to try and short some now then. I don't know if it's on my, um, yeah, no, this broker doesn't reflect that. I don't know if it's on my broker's sell short list. Let me try and uh, I'm gonna do that now. Just give me one momento. Sell short, what is it? GDRX, GDRX. In the extended hours, so I'm going to say 30.85. I got filled. 30.99. Hey, thanks for that. If I make money, I'll uh, definitely owe you. If I lose, I'll come looking for you. Um, so here is a live execution. I sold 5,000 shares, so about 150 grand's worth in the extended hours, filled 5,000 at 30.99. So we'll see what happens, man. Uh, that's gonna be interesting. Um, 
So I got a lot going on. Well, you know, I got a cushion with this. I got 20 grand cushion with this copaying. Uh, so let's see uh, how that works out. I, I don't think there's a lot of risk on that, that trade. Um, so thanks for that. Uh, you're welcome, Simon. So, all right. So that's all he says. What is the average time of day that you think stock reaches their high and low for the day? I don't know. You know, market open. So I do a lot of stuff around the opening and we have a, you know, program called the boiler room. I'm sure you'll get an email about it. And so that program actually starts a half hour before the market. And I start assessing things uh, before the market. And, you know, sometimes the market gives you great opportunity before the market even opens, you know, um, where if I'm looking to uh, go short and a stock is looking like it's much higher in the pre-market, I'll sell into that. And then sometimes the more regular session will close and I've got a $5 profit as the market opens. So, um, you know, that's a pre-market session. We, you know, we, we chat for about an hour. Uh, from nine to about 10 30 uh, Eastern time. And that's every day. So uh, to me, most of the, what I look to do is on uh, the opening or the close. Anything in between is really just a gamble. So I try and get, uh, you try and assess the risk by looking at the previous day, seeing where that previous day's close was. And then uh, if I get a you know, higher move, so like today, NEO, you can see that it went to 45.12. And as it went higher, I bought puts. So as it was moving higher, I bought puts into it using yesterday's key reversal. So you can see as this thing went higher, I kind of bet that it wouldn't come past that high there. So as it was making a new high, I was buying puts on this thing. Now, you know, it announces earnings tonight. I don't know if it's come out or not. Uh, maybe you guys know, it doesn't look like that. And so I use, you know, the previous day's information. And then like on the opening, it went higher, like in the first half hour. And I just bought puts into that. Uh, so if you're interested in the elite here, you know, give a message to our support team at the pattern trader.com. I'm going to put that link. So for any questions on any of our programs or any information, just send them uh, an inquiry and they'll uh, get back to you. So Robert says, I've incorporated your processes into my own trading for the past month and my account is up 30%. Thanks for your help. So that's fantastic. You know, I, I get, you know, people always ask me why I do this. You know, I love to give back. I don't need to. I make way more in my trading than uh, in my, uh, Oh, so Neo's going to report at 5.30. So in two minutes. Cool. All right. We should have a result in two minutes. Thanks for that. Um, let's see what it's doing. It's about 20 cents lower. Uh, CPNG is crashing five bucks. You know what? I think I'm going to take another thousand shares here in CPNG. Um, you know, just learned that. And sometimes I miss out. You know, it's like... Um, I just look at these earnings plays as gifts. It's like not even a real trade. If I can get, you know, $5 in five minutes, I mean, uh, so I put a pending order there and uh, didn't fill me. 32. Where is this thing? I should have got filled. re-enter this. Yeah, I think I'm placing the regular session again. Yeah, I did. All right, so I got filled on 200 on 1,000. Okay, so here you go. So that way I can't come in tomorrow and, you know, be a loser. I've got uh, 2,000 of the 5,000 covered already. And, you know, so I got out at 3290. 
and I got in at what, 36.64. So made uh, $4 on um, this 4,000 shares here. So I've got 3,000 shares left and I'll kind of just let that ride now. Um, so NEO is now dropping a little bit. It's down 50 cents. Uh, so let me see, oh, I don't have my screen on. Uh, let me know if they announce. I mean, it should it should be reflected here. Um, Airbnb, um, we looked at, uh, let me just see what this Neo is doing. Not a whole lot. So, you know, obviously one winner can take it, you know, take care of a lot of losers. Uh, and there will be losers. Uh, let me assure you, there's just no way to uh, guess this, but you can see, I mean, I've just made so, so Airbnb actually looks like it's in a resistance level here. Um, let me just see what this looks like. Looks like a bit of a trap. I looks like there's a bit of a resistance area here. I couldn't say one way or another. And you know, I, I like to have a lot of confidence if I'm going to do an earnings play. You can't do them all. Um, so there's so many. Um, that um, yeah. So now Neo is going higher up about 20 cents and I have these options that expire Friday. So, you know, you're going to get murdered on the options if it doesn't go your way. So uh, probably take a bit of a bath on those, but, you know, let's see what happens. I mean, th these earnings, you can see like on STF, it went $2 one way. And by the end of the day, it was $2 the other way. So um, that's why I kind of, you know, covered some of this CPNG because you could wake up tomorrow and it's down $5 in the aftermarket and then you never see it. I, I, I bought Uber uh, in the uh, aftermarket after earnings, and you never saw that print. So this low of forty dollars, I actually bought Uber uh, after the earnings at thirty-eight dollars. So you can see, and then the next day it just opened and went higher. So you know, earnings, it's it's all over the map. Um, and so, yeah. So now you can see it's dropping again. So Neo is just all over the place. I still think this thing, you know, is going to go lower, but. Maybe not as low as I needed to go with the options. Um, so, any other questions? Neo earnings up 127%. So, this is a good example of how something could be good, but it's how the market interprets it, right? So, you had a whole bunch of things last week where Apple beat and Amazon beat and whatever, and then the stocks got crushed. So it has nothing to do with what the earnings says because the earning is about last quarter. Now the market's saying, okay, you're up 127%. What's the likelihood are you going to do that next quarter? The market is about the future. Uh, it's a discounting mechanism. So now you can see it's going lower again. So, uh, you know, it, it could just, you know, so they could be, you know, now they give guidance for the next forward thing and the guidance can be, so these earnings, I'm telling you, it's just all that counts is the price. You know, so earnings are up to 127% and the price is going lower. So because the chart told you the chart, you, things going lower. So it doesn't matter what, you know, the, the, the company says. It just matters what the picture says. And it just feels like there, this thing has to come back to the $40 area. I mean, there is a bit of a bottom in here, but I, I don't think so. I mean, this one's a little bit more complicated. It's not as great as CPNG. It's it's more complicated, but I still think this thing wants to come lower. And you can see that um, we're starting to drift lower. Close at 43.97, we're about 50 cents lower. But I've got these $42 puts. It needs to go much lower in order for me to make money. So I need a real push. This isn't This isn't going to cut it. Uh, Michael says on Myrna, what charts makes you think you want to short it? So uh, 
you know, my, I have a philosophy that if, you know, the market, you know, expands, the volatility expands. Uh, so that's the chart. When you see that kind of reversal, it tells you it's over. But what I was looking at is, so when I, so let me just go here. When I talk about volatility expansion, well, let me start off. I'll, I'll show you what it looked like on gold. So I called the top of gold um, really before a top was put in. And I said it because you can see that, you know, up to here is very orderly. The, these are weekly ranges from high to low, you know, very small orderly ranges. And then you can see once it started popping, you had, you had three weeks in a row of huge expanded volatility. And this always is, to me signals the end. There's emotion, there's speculation, it's FOMO, the retail guys who think they missed it, want to get in at the top and then it's the end. And so Moderna to me felt the same way. I started calling a top on Moderna last week. And uh, so now gold's at a very interesting place. Gold's in this uh, ascending broadening price pattern. And you can see it just now is caught, you know, a, a bid each time on this lower end. But the thing is, you know, I can't really see gold cutting through all of this thing. So, you know, I think we just bounce off the bottom and we'll have to see where it goes. But my point is, this is what I want you to look at here is this expansion of volatility. So from 2100, we sold off down to 1671. We, we sold off 400 points. And I think Moderna is going to be the same situation where we put in the top. So you can see, you know, back here in the boiler room, I was buying at the low. I bought the low at 216. And I said that day that this stock's going to double. I bought right here at two, where was it? This guy, somewhere in here, 216. And I said the stock's going to double from there. And it sure has it more than double. But you can see how it went from, you know, orderly, you know, kind of these uh, ranges to just hyperbolic. You can just see that the, the ranges are just huge. And that's the end. That's the end. That's the end. Uh, so now the question is, you know, it just you short into rallies. Just any good rally, any $20, $30 rally, just short into it. But it's over. But, you know, the thing is, something doesn't go straight up and then straight down. It needs to kind of build away and go down, go up. It's, you know, short covering rallies are monster. But, uh, you know, if you get a $50, $60, you know, rally, sell into it. Because uh, I know I will be. And, uh, you know, I took, uh, I started anticipating that. I started selling it at 469 last night. I got out some at 411, some at 395, and then some at 389 today. So I was shorting it last night at 469 and it just gapped lower. And uh, yeah, I made 250 grand today on that. Not bad. Could you short explain what, could you explain the quote list for nutrition so that we can better understand the difference? Oh, so this is just my own broker. So, you know, this is uh, the instrument. Uh, this is the last trade. This is the bid, the offer, uh, the percentage change for the, uh, uh, the dollar change for the day, the percentage change, the high, the low, the open, um, you know, and close, and then, you know, volume and what have you. So that's just how most instruments are presented on any um, trader program. So I, I know I take a lot for granted. So thank you for that question. So NEO is now higher. So I'm gonna get creamed on those options. They're gonna get cut in half right on the opening. So um, yeah, I like to take an options play on that. And that's the difficulty. It has to work or it's, you're gonna get creamed. You could lose most or all of your money the next day. And I bet, how much do I have on the line on that thing? I bet a lot. I put uh, I put about fifteen thousand in there, and I was making five thousand today, uh, and it's going to take it away from me very quickly. So um, I'm going to probably lose quite a bit right on the opening. 
and then you just got to get out, take 50, 60% haircut, get out and what have you. So I'll, I'll probably lose on that, but I'm making 22 grand on this. So if I lose seven grand on this, it's just the way it goes. But, you know, let's see how, uh, let's see how we go tomorrow. Um, a, why ABT has not thing. And then Bumble is, I'm losing also about 40 cents on that. All right, guys, I think that's, that's it for me. Uh, again, if you, um, you know, wouldn't mind uh, just uh, leaving me a review, um, I would really appreciate it. Um, I'll put this in the, um, this kind of gives me feedback on if you understood it, if, if the presentation was, you know, okay, if the, the, um, you know, information was some of uh, value. I would really appreciate it. Dakin, I appreciate it. Thanks very much. So, um, Deeps, thank you, man. Uh, I'll get in touch with you. Uh, for sure. And I, it was really very unnecessary and very appreciated game. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thanks everybody. Um, yes, yeah, sir. You're welcome. Enjoy the summer months. I wish I could. <laughs> um, Henny. So, uh, Marco says magic as always. So you're welcome. Yeah. So, you know, I think really, hopefully what should uh, start to set in is how all you need, you know, to me, you know, price is the news. This is all I need. There's no, you can see there's no volume on here. There's no moving averages. There's, you know, uh, all I needed to do is see this reversal and, you know, this increased volatility. And I made $250,000. So, uh, you know, it's taken me a while to obviously accumulate this knowledge. <laughs> um, you know, uh, so, but that it's all based on price. There's no moving averages, no MACD. There's no magic here. I'm not sitting in front of the screen, you know, on a 15 minute chart for three hours, trying to bang out a dollar or two. I'm looking for the moves that are gonna, you know, move, whether it be an earnings play or any other play. I'm looking for something to go from one level to the other. And, um, you know, and that's, that's how you make money. If you try and bang it out, try and make a dollar here, a dollar, you know, you've got to be 90% correct. I can lose 60% of my trades and, uh, you know, uh, make more than that in one trade. So, um, so Henny, thank you for that. Deborah, thank you for that. All right, guys, cheers. Have a great day. Have a healthy and prosperous trading day. And we'll see you uh, next time. Check out the Boiler Room if you're interested uh, or any of our other programs if you feel uh, they can be of help to you. Uh, just message our support team if you um, want a recording. Support at The Pattern Trader. All right, guys. Thanks a ton. All right, Mark. See you tomorrow. Hey, Dwight. Thanks a lot, man. Cheers. No problem.